Welcome and thank you for joining us for our first ever live Merry Chef webinar session. The purpose of this session was to uh, allow you to have a chance to understand more about the Merry Chef high speed ovens. We'd usually do this a couple of times a month at locations up and down the country um, where our well built masterclass sessions allow some of our culinary team to uh, present the benefits, the features of the Merry Chef high speed oven range. Given the current situation, we're unable to do that. So what we thought is that we would offer the same uh, concept, same idea in a much more condensed version and brought to you virtually through Facebook here today. Just as a quick introduction, I'm Andrew. I'm the marketing manager here at Wellbuilt. And joining me in the kitchen today is Chef Paul. And behind the scenes, we've also got Steve Hempsell, who's uh, sales director for the UK. And then we've got Helen Stone and Adam Sajid, who are part of the Murray Chef brand team. So they will be here to help answer your questions and provide any answers that we need to. Given the challenges of space in a commercial kitchen, as I'm sure you're all aware, Paul and I will do our best to socially distance and ad <laughs> adhere to the social distance rules. Um, but as I'm sure you're aware, that's not always uh, as easy to do. So now, sh now Chef Paul is going to give you a short introduction into the Murray Chef range. Over to you, Paul. Thank you, Andrew. So hi, yes, my name's Chef Paul. Uh, I am part of the UK culinary team and our job, one of our part roles, is to be able to help you find the best Merry Chef for your application, but also to make sure you get the best out of it once you uh, get it out of the box. So what I'm going to show, show to you now is a brief description of the full range of Merry Chef ovens that we have here. And you can see by the logos there is a difference. We've got the E1S, the E2S, the E3 and the E4. They all have vari varying power uh, usages. So the microwave energy will be different and also the power supply with regards to plugs will be different and we will talk more on that as we go through. So the first thing I want to get across is we have one oven in our range that can be used as a conventional fan assisted baking oven as well as a speed cooking oven. The rest of the ovens are just primarily for speed cooking and that one oven is our E3. Using three shelves we can turn this into a baking oven. We can set the oven temperature at 160, 165 degrees, whatever you require. Two square trays, one round tray, put your frozen products on there and bake away. And they will take the same time as the recommendations on the manufacturing products for your Danish. So for example, 18 to 23 minutes. Once we finish that, we would take out the square trays. As you can tell, this oven's not hot. And then we can keep the round tray in there we would take the temperature up to 275 degrees centigrade and then we would apply the speed cooking. So then we would put our toasties on the bottom shelf, the round tray or our paninis and they would take on average a toasted sandwich in an E3 for example would be around two and a half minutes. What you're going to see as we go through this presentation is we're going to more than cut that time in half with our faster ovens. So the E3 as I said is our only oven that can speed cook on the round tray and then conventional bake if you use three trays and that's very important. Okay, so the other three ovens around that, the E4, the E2S and the E1, they are our impingement ovens and by that I mean forced hot air. So we can now control the fan speed in these three ovens and take our temperature which can go up to 275 degrees centigrade and we can force it down onto the food up to nearly 60 miles an hour. So our cooking, our colouring and our crisping can be up to 20 times faster than conventional cooking methods. So, Andrew, any questions so far? Well, thank you very much for that, Paul. Um, we have had a number of questions come in already, um, but what I would say at this, session, at this stage is that if you've got any questions you'd like to ask us, feel free to pop them in the chat function underneath the live video, or alternatively email us at culinary.uk at wellbuilt.com. We can pick those up live and we will do our very best to answer them. So Paul, over to you just for a, uh, a bit of a culinary uh, demonstration and uh, to see what the ovens can do. Right, thank you, Andrew. Um, like I said, they are all different shapes and sizes and they all have slightly different applications. Uh, one thing I'm going to show first off the bat to get this quite clear to everyone, 
cooking raw fatty protein. The best oven that we have in our range for that is going to be the E4. It has uh, catalytic converters in there and they are designed to take away the smoke and the smells and the grease away from the cavity and the food. So when you open the oven door, you're not going to get a face full. Now the E2S and the E1S also have catalytic converters, but they are of a smaller variety. So they would not cope with large volumes of raw fatty protein. So trays of sausage, trays of bacon. So what I'm going to show is how we do it in the E4 and then later on we now move into snacks pizzas, toasties and other types of food that we can cook in our E1S and our E2S. So I'm going to do a club sandwich first. I'm going to do a toasted club sandwich from fresh. So Paul, just, yes. just on that note then, um, we've had two questions in that I, potentially that you could answer straight away. So the first one being is, is there any types of food that you're not able to cook in, in a Mary Chef oven? You mentioned there that certain ovens are better suited for certain foods. Yes. Um, so we wouldn't cook the Danish pastries, for example, in any of the E1S, E2S or the E4 because they don't have that baking capability. But we could reheat cold Danish, absolutely. Um, we wouldn't look at very large lumps of frozen food. When we are using speed cooking and we're using such high temperatures of 275 degrees centigrade and using up to 2000 watts of microwave energy, there's a risk of destroying the exterior of that product before you can get it cooked and get the correct core temperature that you need. So big frozen lumps of, uh, let's say a lasagna, for example, if it was a frozen lasagna, I'd have to say, no, sorry, we would rather we do it from a chilled state. Um, and there are ways around that as well, though. If it was shallow and wider, then yes, we could get the energy into it from a frozen state and probably produce a good product. But it's all about testing. So we like to test the products first, see if it can uh, create a perfect cooking program. And we recommend that you do this when you buy your Merry Chef oven as well. Um, and then once you've got that correct, you would save that program, great. We will be honest, if there's a product we cannot do, and it does happen from time to time, we will say no, sorry, it's not possible. Okay, fantastic. And then the second question then, which I think you can answer, um, you mentioned just there that you're just about to prepare a club sandwich. Yep. One of the crucial elements to me anyway of a club sandwich is, a, is, is the toasted bread. Okay. So, one of the questions we've had come in is, can you cook toast in a Mary Chef? Well, we shall see. So I'm going to do a toasted club sandwich. Now, if it was a pre-made product, obviously the toast would already be done, the sandwich, the chicken, the bacon would be cooked, and that would all be inside, and you would just reheat that product. Not the best way, to be fair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create it. I'm going to cook the raw chicken and bacon in the E4 only, and then when I'm finished, the oven's going to tell me what to do, and it will show you how we do toast. Fantastic. Look forward to that. So I'm just going to oil and season my chicken. Now, you, one thing you may notice, like I said, these are impingement ovens, and yes, they have catalytic converters in, uh, and yes, we talked about they can get rid of the grease and the smoke and the smells. However, sometimes you need to apply grease uh, or an oil, which I have just done on here, but I'm using a spray bottle, and the reason I'm doing that is I can control exactly how much oil I need to place inside the oven or onto the product. If you start... Uh, pouring it on, you might lose that control, you might put too much in, and that can cause you problems later down the line. So it's all about controlling how much grease I put in there, and a spray bottle is by far the best way. So, what I've got here is one of our accessories for our E4 oven only, and it's a griddle tray. And the idea behind the griddle tray is so that I can put some bar marking on my product. So what I wanna do, even though this is gonna go inside the sandwich, I wanna bar mark my chicken. So if you were cooking, um, steaks for example or fish you could absolutely take uh, this tray and griddle and bar mark it so it looked like you had done it on a conventional method so I'm going straight to my e4 place the griddle tray in my detachable handle put it safe up there uh, go into my uh, recipes and here I've got one here in club sandwich so I press that and now that's gonna start now it tells me here I'm into 30 seconds but I've got multiple stages on a club sandwich and we'll see what happens after 30 seconds, but there will be some, the oven tell me to do something. Why we do that, I'll just get rid of the waste here and I will also put some fresh gloves on. Okay, so yeah, if we looks like we're uh, looking a bit weird, we have got cables with our microphones attached, so we are trying to be uh, risk assessing as we move along. So you may not be able to see that from here, but we will do a close up later on the screen. It says to me now, turn the chicken over and continue cooking. So I now need to take my tray out. I'm going to bring it to the counter. Now, obviously, that's not fully cooked. So I take my tongs. 
And as you can see, we started to get some bar marking on the chicken. That's fantastic. And, and how long has that been in so far? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Wow. Now I'm just turning my bacon as well. Place that over there. Take it back to the oven. Press the green tick and it's going to give it another 30 seconds. So I'm cooking raw chicken and bacon in, in 60 seconds. Um, the idea of turning it is obviously to get a bit of colour on both sides, but at the same time, I don't want to, I am using some microwave energy, but I don't want to pound all that microwave energy to get through the top to the bottom. By turning it over, we're only taking it halfway through. That's going to give us a still succulent, juicy chicken breast. Now, if I was using cooked chicken and cooked bacon, I would do this in the E2S or the E1S, and it's going to be a lot quicker because all I have to do then is re -therm that product. I don't have to uh, cook it all the way through. So, that's now indicated that it's done, but it's saying there, remove the griddle tray and start the toast. So, we'll pop our griddle tray down. Here's three slices of bread that I had pre-wrapped. So this is where we're going to answer the question. You wanted to know about, about the toast. toast. Here we go. Perfect. So I'm going to put this straight onto my wire rack. And the reason being on that in here, I've got hot air being blown up and blown down on the E4. Press the green tick, 60 seconds to do toast. Now that will vary from product to product. Every customer's bread is different. I think the fastest toast we've ever done is about 35 seconds. One of my colleagues, Chef James, actually found a, a particular loaf of bread that toasts a lot faster. And he's done a 35 second toasty, which was really good. So, we'll just give that a, a, a wait and have a look. So here's the chicken just resting on the tray. What you can't see there probably is underneath is a drip tray, so all the moisture, any grease, any juices is going into a tray, a catchment tray, so I can then take that to the pot wash and uh, take that away. That's not in the oven. So it's not just speed of cooking, it's also speed of cleaning, speed, Absolutely. Of, speed of use. I mean, everything that's got okay, a non-stick coating on there, so it's going to wash up and clean easily. Obviously, with everything that we cook in our ovens, what we do say is always use a clean uh, hot tray, if it's a metal tray in the E3 or the E4. With the E1S and the E2S, we use a different type of material, which I'll show you later. Uh, but again, it's always about clean trays. Don't put dirty trays back in the oven because all you're doing is baking on the dirt. Okay. So here's our toast. Three slices, 60 seconds. Oh, fantastic. Look Oops, at the browning amazing. on that. It's a bit warm. So what we'll do now is we'll assemble our club sandwich. So what I've got here, I'm going to use a nice uh, mango and parsley mayonnaise I've made, got a nice bit of uh, red gem lettuce on the base there. So you touched on earlier about you could quite easily make a club sandwich or just simply preheat a, a ready-made club sandwich but actually this is so much better in terms of quality, freshness and, and it doesn't take very long to do either. Yeah so. absolutely I mean as you said in total cooking time we've actually only done 60 seconds for the chicken and bacon and 60 seconds for the toast. And the reason we don't do them together is because I don't need microwave energy to heat up the toast. Okay. So I wouldn't put the toast in next to the chicken. That wouldn't work. Um, we'll put some more of this lovely mango mayonnaise on there. Take that out of the way. And then we'll take our bacon. In fact, tell you what, we'll even put some avocado in here as well make it a club sandwich to remember. Now, if you were doing this in a hotel scene, room service, for example, the chefs could do all the mise en place, the preparation, have the chicken sliced up on a tray, and you just then follow the instructions on the oven. If it was a cooked product, like I said, if the bacon and the chicken was cooked, you just needed reheating. Again, you could do the toast, then you could put the chicken and the bacon in the oven, probably 15 to 20 seconds, reheat it, and then assemble it. A waiter, a night porter can do that, you don't need a chef in the evening. That's fantastic. Okay, so we'll put a little bit of butter on the underside of this toast as well. We'll just move that out of the way for a second. Right, and always the trickiest part is always cutting a club sandwich without the filling falling out. So as I said, we've done the toast. Now I could do probably four slices in there in that size cavity, which is 12 by 14 inches. Okay. So 60 seconds for toast. You don't need a roller grill, you don't need a pop-up toaster, and the heat is also kept within the cavity, so with roller grills, for example, they're constantly pumping out the hot air. Yeah. 
we're trying to retain the hot air inside the Mary Chef itself. And again, that's something that in this day and age, or, or certainly for the new normal, when we when we look talking about social distancing and you know perhaps having fewer people in the kitchen, having a, a kitchen environment that isn't too hot, um, lost a little bit there, is 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 only going to be a benefit at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. The, yeah. the one thing we say with our Mary Chef ovens is yes, they. Uh, the majority of them are exactly uh, what we call extraction free or ventless which means as long as you're in a ventilated room you do not need to put them under a, a kitchen hood or an extraction system because of the catalytic converters and that's exactly what we've got here I guess the, yes. the, the setup here there, there is no ventilation uh, or no specific ventilation hood above no um, we're simply in so a ventilated much. kitchen and, and that's sufficient yeah. the one of them though however is the e3 the e3 is standard does not have a catalytic converter in, so therefore you would need to put that under extraction. However, you can buy the E3C, which stands for catalytic converter, or you could have, if you already have an E3 and you need a catalytic converter, you can order one from us, you can have it retrofitted yourself, it's quite easy to install inside the cavity, and then you put that catalytic converter there, then you can remove that oven and place it anywhere you like around the kitchen. Okay, so club sandwich, two minutes to cook. Guys, just whilst, uh, whilst pulls. together finishing cleaning up there don't forget that you can send in questions just pop them on the uh, chat function at the bottom of this live video or feel free to email us culinary.uk at wellbuilt.com that will come straight through to us and between Paul and I Helen Adam and Steve online hopefully we can answer that question for you right. chef Paul just uh, just one thing very quickly I know you're going to touch on it in a short while but we've had a question come in um, from Cara thank you very much Cara for your question um, Cara says can you use any accessories or do, do they have to be Merry Chef own accessories? Right, okay, that's a very, very good question, Cara. Um, there is a lot of confusion about what you can place inside a Merry Chef. It is a hot oven, it is an oven. However, it does have microwave energy. So therefore, there are certain do's and don'ts that we want to, oh, thank you. So for example, tin foil containers. Most definitely not, thank you. We do not put tin foil or metal inside our cavities. The metal that we may supply with Merry Chef ovens, such as the E3 and the E4, is a coated metal tray, usually a Teflon coat or a vitreous enamel tray, which means the metal is coated, therefore it's protected from the microwave energy. Our E2S and our E1S and all our things going forward now is we're using PTFE trays. Now, they are consumable, they will over time, a long time, eventually wear away and you would need to replace them, but they are very good to use and a lot safer than big metal trays. So what we wouldn't want you to do is buy a Merry Chef oven, take it back to your establishment and then you suddenly get an industry standard gastronom container and think you can place it in the oven. Behind that closed door would be a nice firework display uh, of blue sparks when you microwave. I'm sure you've all seen it at home if you've used a standard microwave. That's what would happen inside the cavity and that is not a good thing. So the answer is we provide or uh, are available a hell of a lot of different types of accessories and they are over there in the corner and I will touch on them more a little bit later. Okay. There are other things you can cook on. We have Teflon mats. We have certain takeaway containers um, that you can use. Now these are the only ones that I've come across so far. Uh, we don't supply these. These are supplied by a company called Havi, H-A-V-I, um, that the only ones globally that will go up to the temperatures of our 275 degrees and I am going to cook a dish in this later to show you how good they are uh, and they come in all shapes and sizes if you want more information on them like I said you can google search Havi H-A-V-I or you can get in touch with us and I'll give you some more information you can also cook on certain papers so grease proof paper sandwich paper not all papers will work well some will uh, dry out too much and break down uh, some that are printed, the inks may burn, so again we would have to test that paper to make sure. This one myself I use, uh, it's a silicon piece of paper and I'm going to cook on this later and it's perfect. You could do a toasted sandwich or a panini on here in the oven, bring it out, wrap it up and hand it to the customer. You've, you've not touched the food at all. So what I would suggest is when you start to look at um, a Merry Chef oven, let's look at your menu, let's look at what you want to cook and let's recommend some sort of starter pack of what types of trays and accessories would suit you is probably the best way we could go with that. Okay, thank you very much, Paul. Um, okay. So we've also had a couple of other questions. Um, sorry, Cara, I hope that answers your question. Um, but just whilst Paul's preparing um, the next dish, we've had a, another couple of questions come in. Um, the first question that has come in is um, around pricing, actually. Um, so, yeah. I don't get involved in pricing, that's all for you. That's a tricky question to answer. It is indeed. Um, Merry Chef ovens, Merry Chef high speed ovens, the, the ovens that you can see here are available around the world. Um, 
What I would suggest is the best thing to do is to contact your regional Merry Chef representative who will be able to advise you specifically. Here in the UK, we offer all the Merry Chef ovens through a number of dealers and distributors. Um, again, we can advise you on your local uh, contact. You can find out more on merrychef.com. But just to give you a very rough idea, the list price on a couple of our ovens, so for example, the entry level E1S, um, the list price for this is £5,250 in the UK. The E3 that uh, Paul was touching on there in terms of a baking oven, the list price for that starts at £4,400. So you can see that the prices do vary, but I would suggest that you speak to your local or regional Merry Chef representative to find out more about specific pricing. So Paul, what are we, uh, okay. what are we moving on to now? Right. We're going to go on to toasties. One of the biggest things that uh, Merry Chef are really famous for is toasted sandwiches or handheld snacks, paninis, wraps, etc. So again, highlighting the benefit of toasting, but we're going to use the E1S and the E2S. Now, the difference between these two ovens is the microwave power, but also the plug sockets. So our E2S comes in a couple of variations. You can have a standard power. So if you're a low level business, not too busy, 13 amp, three pin plug, pick up the Merry Chef, plug it in and away you go. You can have a higher power version, and this one's actually plugged into a big blue plug behind there on 30 amps. The E1S, however, has been designed for a specific market. So if you're not a super busy establishment, want to do 50, 60 cooks at lunchtime, again, 13 amp is not as powerful as the E2S. It is slightly wider on the exterior, but the cavity is exactly the same in both. They are both 12 by 12 inches. But it has been designed for a specific market sector. If you, I can stress this enough to be fair, if you are going to be a busy establishment and you want to future proof your business and you think you're going to do a lot of cooking, you've got to go high power every time because it's a workhorse and it will keep you going. If you're cooking a lot of breakfast items, sausage and bacon, uh, as well as toasties and pizzas and snacks, then you've got to go E4. Okay, and also, like I said, if the E3, if you're not super busy, you're not worried about a toasted sandwich taking two and a half minutes, but you need a baking establishment oven, then that's the E3 for you. Just, just to, to cut in there, Paul, just to mention that where you mentioned about power specifically, yep. we're talking about the UK and Ireland. Yes, there. we are. Okay. So It does you, vary. In yeah, it does, absolutely. And so obviously the plug would be different as well. Of so course. if you are watching from outside the UK, just get in touch with us and we'll put you in contact with our colleagues around the world who can then give you more information on your variation. So what we're going to do here, as you can see, both screens are identical. They all are across the board. The only difference with the E3, it's in portrait version. The others are in landscape version, but they all function exactly the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to press our cookbook and I've preloaded some categories and some recipes. And I'm going to do a toasted sandwich in each one. So we'll start with the E1 and I'm going to go to my toasty category and it says there toasty one, toasty two. I'm going to cook these direct on the cook plate, but you can cook on a Teflon mat or on a piece of paper if you so wish. So I press toasty and away it goes. That says one minute, five seconds. In the E2S, same procedure, straight in, uh, handheld snacks, no, we're not in handheld snacks. We are in, uh, where are we? This is a great one, I've lost me, I've lost me toasty. <laughs> there it is, toasty times one. 50 seconds in the E2S high power. 50 seconds for yeah. a toasty, wow. And, and the main reason between the difference is the two. The E1S only goes up to 260 degrees centigrade, whereas the E2, uh, E2S goes to 275. So there is a difference. So it's, it's gonna take the bread a little bit longer to brown in our E1S. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so while it's doing that, you can see it's counting down. Now normally the ovens would be locked out and all you would see is a big green bar and a countdown timer. You don't have to do anything until that oven indicates that the cooking program is done. And we're going to go into the, uh, the actual screen a little bit later on today, show you how to program and how to change recipes. But this tells me now, if I was doing testing, this is telling me uh, the temperature, the time, the fan speed and the amount of microwave energy I'm using for this product. Now, if this product comes out incorrect, I then need to test that, go back and make a change. If it comes out perfect, like it always does, then I don't need to do anything about it. I just save that program, add a photograph, give it a name, and we're good to go. So, there you go, two toasters, slightly lighter in the E1S, so maybe another five seconds would have got that to about the same color that we need, but hopefully you can uh, hear that, nice and crunchy. 
if you were to do this in a panini grill or a clamshell grill, you'd be looking at maybe three to five minutes, depending on the amount of filling. We've now cut that down to in our fastest oven 50 seconds. And not just that, for me, uh, when you look at the toasties or the paninis that come out of a clam, gr clam uh, grill, they tend to be squashed, they tend to be your, your traditional sort of panini, whereas these are, they look great, they're, they're not squashed, they've got a great colour on them, and they're done so quickly. Yeah, the thing with panini presses is, is, it, is exactly that, it squashes, and people's attitude is a panini or a ciabatta must be squashed, and that's not true, it's actually the type of bread. Mm. Um, and I will do a panini shortly. The idea of when we do our paninis is because we don't squash them, it's a lot bigger, it's a lot yeah. taller. So the customer's perception is I'm getting better value for money. Uh, absolutely. So and, I, and I think in, in this day and age as well, the speed is the other thing that I think is going to be crucial. When, re when cafes, when restaurants and pubs reopen, with social distancing, you don't want a queue to be around the block. So therefore, you need to be able to speed up that service to customers. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's one of the big benefits of a Mary Chef high speed oven. Yeah, it's in the name. <laughs> high speed oven. We, we do excel at delivering what we call um, quality food fast. You can call it fast food if you wish. But the fact of the matter is we can do quality food. And as we go through this presentation, I am going to touch on some other dishes, not just snacks, but uh, some different type of dishes that we can do. So it's not just for the, the sandwich shop restaurants take this hotels take this you know we are everywhere around the world whether it be petrol forecourt, uh, forecourt stations department stores staff dining um, like i said there are limitations but we figure that out beforehand and we wouldn't expect the whole menu to be dependent on one piece of equipment no, um, but we can take a lot away from uh, your operation remove the panini grill remove the roller toaster remove the salamander grill and in some instances you could even remove a deep fat fryer and I will uh, do a deep fried product later. So it's about having, having all those abilities, all those capabilities in a commercial kitchen using essentially one piece of kit. Not yeah. only are we saving on footprint, we're, we're saving on cost potentially of, of purchasing multiple pieces of kit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we need less people in the kitchen. So again, well, it's, that's not it's, always a good thing, <laughs> but you can redis re redistribute those. Absolutely. <laughs> but, but from a social distancing point of view, it yeah, certainly absolutely. makes it a lot simpler. So what are we, what, what are we looking to do now? So I'm just going to uh, pop an, a panini or a ciabatta into the E1S um, just to show you, you were talking about that takeaway uh, option. Now we can do this several ways actually. What we'll do is we'll take a piece of paper. So this is our sandwich paper. Now I'm going to do my panini open and I, I prefer to do my paninis open and I'll explain why. But first off we're just going to place that into the oven. We're using our black uh, tray first off. Uh, go to panini and it's just prompting. Have you laid the panini open on the tray? So I've put more instructions, part of staff training, and make sure I'm doing the job consistently. Press the tick, 45 seconds. So what I want to do with this then is, like I said, doing it open. I'm grilling the inside, I'm toasting the bread, I'm caramelizing the cheese. If I do a panini closed, my microwave energy has to go through the top of the bread, potentially drying it out. But then when it hits the filling, it steams it. That steam goes back into the bread. This way, I'm delivering a, a, a better smell and aroma from the melted cheese, because we all know grilled cheese smells lovely and also the texture on the inside will be crisper and I can add more colour to the bacon etc whatever I need. When this comes out if I want to I could put some salad garnish inside it, close it up and serve it and okay. delivering a better product. Like I said this is 45 seconds. Just, <coughs> just whilst me. you're finishing off there we've, we've had a comment from Anthony on the, uh, on the chat and he said that the E2S and the E1S look super in black. Uh, I have to agree Anthony I think they do look fantastic. Um, the E2S comes as standard in silver in the in the stainless steel, but we do also do that. The trend E2S trend range is both in the black and also in a nice red finish, nice matte red finish. Which there is some customers that we work with that the red, particularly with a front of house setup, where customers are going to see the oven, see the operation, the black and particularly the red look fantastic. So yeah, that's uh, that's yeah. an option we we offer. So oh, but yes, the E1S only comes in black, whereas the E2S this is called a trend. What we've done is we've rounded off the corners, we've got a rail bar on the top so to hold plates or cups if you wanted to up there. And as Andrew said, yes, that comes in red or black. If you want the classic version, it's just going to be stainless steel and squared, similar to the E3. So you have three colour choices on the E2S. On the E1S, however, standard black. So this is my panini. Uh, I've melted my cheese, not too much. I've toasted the inside of the bread. I've put a bit of a leaf in there. 
but now all I can do if I want to I can take the whole thing here just cut it in half wrap it up can you pass me that paper bag there please this one kind. no that there the paper bag sorry sorry there you go so this was going out and the other product wrap it up place it into there bottle of water bag of crisps apple we'll even give you a serviette there you go that's your lunch for later thank you very much that's simple we are talking heating a product like that in 45 seconds it will take you longer than that to make a nice latte or a cappuccino out of our creme machines our creme coffee machines uh, if you have an espresso obviously that's super quick but generally if you can feed a customer from point of order to cashing out in 90 seconds to maybe two and a half minutes you're onto a winner and with Merry Chef we can achieve that okay so Paul just uh, again whilst you're um, prepping for the next item to cook and um, we've had another question come in and this one regards warranty now in the same way as pricing warranty does vary depending on the region that you're uh, in and where you're looking to make the purchase in the UK all Merry Chef ovens come with a one-year warranty and as of this week the beginning of this week we launched our first added value package and for that we are offering an additional one-year parts warranty on all Merry Chef purchases uh, placed and invoiced between the 1st of June so it's backdated to the 1st of June through to the first 31st of December as I said it's the first of our added value packages and just a way of uh, giving you that extra peace of mind when making a purchase of a Merry Chef high speed oven okay sounds good not that you'll need it obviously um, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to do you a chilled pizza in our E1S. So we can do fresh pizzas as well, uh, but they take a little bit of practice because every customer's dough is different. But for simplicity and ease, this is a chilled deli shop pizza. I've already pre-programmed it, one pizza times chilled. And it says 1 minute 45. Fastest pizza I've ever done is 60 seconds using a fresh dough. The longest pizza we've ever done is 3 minutes from frozen raw. So, you know, and that varies depending on which oven we use but we can deliver pizzas super, super fast. And in this age where we are at the moment with Deliveroo and all these takeaway places that want to get food out, because again, the social distancing, we can't queue up for it. Um, you can't get much faster than this. So while that's in there, just, just whilst you're, you're doing that, yeah. um, just to finish off on the, uh, the warranty that I was mentioning earlier, as part of the package, Merry Chef ovens come with one year labor and one year part, uh, sorry, one year labor and two years parts the additional year uh, makes it up to the two year parts warranty. There are T's and C's, but you can find more about that as on our website or by speaking to your Merry Chef representative. Right, while I've got the chilled one going in the E1S, in the E2S, this is a Chicago Town frozen raw dough stuffed crust pizza. Uh, potentially at home, if you were doing this in a domestic oven, you are looking between 25 to 35 minutes. Obviously we don't have that much time today, so I'll go to my cookbook, go to my category of pizza. It says one frozen pizza. I got a minute 45. That's quite fast, actually, isn't it? That is very it. fast, yeah. yeah. Put the kettle on. So we've now moved on from, um, the, I guess, the traditional paninis, the sandwiches, the, the, the baked items that you mentioned there for breakfast. So we're, we're now talking about what could essentially be a main meal in yes. a, a quick service restaurant or a, a cafe or you know, any, any type of yeah, restaurant. I mean, so, Again, it's just demonstrating the versatility of the ovens. Absolutely. And with these, as I was saying about these type of products, I said about raw protein. If I wanted to reheat chicken wings or, wet, uh, or ribs, yes, I could do that in the E1S and the E2S because as long as it's a small portion, it's not a problem. We're not cooking it from raw. So that's our E1S pizza. Nice and crispy. And we'll cut that one up and put that on the plate. Obviously, normally we would box it up and away you go. Now again, every customer's pizzas are different and also the toppings were different. So the actual programs we use would vary. If this had a lot of roasted Mediterranean vegetables on or God forbid pineapple, there's more moisture, therefore I may need more microwave energy. And how, does, how would a customer go about finding the best uh, program for their particular pizza? How do, how so within the culinary team, obviously we have a wealth of experience. We've been with the business a long time. We've cooked a lot of products through here. So first off, come to us, ask us what you're doing. And we say people, you know, the, the uh, Chicago town pizzas, for example, are available for in the restaurant system uh, to buy through food manufacturers. So restaurants are using that. 
So if they came to us and said, oh, well, actually, you Chicago Town pizzas, we'd have a program setting for them. If it's a pizza that we've not come across, what we would suggest is that they test it on a guideline that we would give you, and then we would assess that. So when it comes out, you can go, right, does it need a little bit more color? Does it need more microwave or less? So we would then change the program to suit, and then we'd do it again. And then once we've got it right, we save that program. And as I said, it's consistently going to be the same every time. As long as the product is consistent going in, it'll be consistent coming out. Okay. So, Chicago Town Pizza from Frozen in 1 minute 45. Wow. And again, going back to, to the new normal. Ooh, that's hot. Takeaway and, and delivery is going to be, uh, well, it already is a, a key part of how restaurants can reopen and, and almost certainly how restaurants are going to serve customers going forward. So products like this are, are, are purely there to, uh, you know, can help, can can help diversify that menu to a takeaway offering. Yeah, absolutely. Pizza's perfect. I mean, we, we could, like I said, we could do potato wedges, which you normally would deep fry. We could do a tray of those. A full tray on here would be around three minutes. And that's going to give you four or five portions. So uh, what we'll talk about briefly now is programming. How to create that program. Okay. So this is called um, Easy Touch or Menu Connect. And it's called Easy Touch because it's easy to touch. We, we come back out. So to create a cooking program, I would go to my Chef's Hat, which is set up in development mode. You can have it in manual mode, but that, that's a different uh, setup, which we would change in the, in the parameters. So here we've got our temperature. I would put a time in, for example, one minute. I could change the fan speed to suit my needs. And let's say for the argument's sake, it's 50%. The microwave energy, I would say, let's put 100%. We don't know what we're cooking. We're just uh, working something out here. Instructions here, if you wanted to put some instructions, such as turn the product over uh, or add cheese, for example, you could put that in there. You can add a second stage, should you need to. You press the tick. It brings up the program. The green diamond allows me now to put the product in the oven and test that program. When it's finished, it comes back to this screen and then I have a choice. I can either go back and make an adjustment and then come forward and test again, or if I'm happy with it, I save it. Press the disc. We'll just call this test for now. Pick a photograph here on the pencil. So this has got some photos already loaded up. So for argument's sake, we'll just pick this ham and cheese croissant. We press the tick. And that now tells me that that program has been saved on the oven. If we come back, go to our cookbook and go to our library of recipes at the top, should be my test. Now that's available in the library. If I want it into a category, I select category, pick a category I want to put it into, press the pencil, highlight my test, green arrow, puts it into my breakfast dishes, and there it is. And that means now I'm only ever two button press away from cooking that product. Now, if you want to, do you have any more questions for me, Andrew, before I move on? Um, not I've just created a program, so okay, it's um, all good. I think there's one to, to talk about a little bit later on, but not right now. Okay. Um, sorry. I've got Karen. more cooking. Okay. Off, I've got more cooking. Um, we'll just give a quick overview of here. So I said chef's hat can be in manual mode or development mode. Press and go is where you can put your favorite dishes. You have a cookbook, which is categories and recipes. And that these can be set up in any way that you require as a customer. Um, you can change these to lunch items, whatever you want to name them. And you can have more than eight. If we had more, there would be an arrow here, such as on the recipes. And you can just keep on scrolling and have as many as you wish. Uh, cleaning, which we're going to touch on later. And then the cogs and wheels, that's the settings. That's all the information behind. And we won't touch on that today, uh, but that's where we do passwords and how we set the cavity up. Okay, Paul, just before we move on to the, uh, to the next culinary demonstration, um, is it worth just touching on some of the accessories that are available? Yeah, I know sure. We, we mentioned them briefly earlier, but just okay. a, a bit more of a... So like I said, we have a varying range. Um, our favourite range, which comes with the E1S and the E2S, is our PTFE black tray. It also comes with a brown Teflon mat. Now, we do them in green as well for vegetarian, and we also do our other trays in green, and they can come in half size, quarter size, we also have the larger ones in uh, red and blue as well for meat dishes and for fish. But our best dish, uh, new range that I really like are, are these, the solid containers. Now we can do wet products. We can reheat a portion of chili, baked beans, a bowl of soup, for example. So now we're doing wet dishes. We're adding to the, uh, the operation that can come out of the Merry Chef. And then taking it further from that, different shape molds. This one, for example, 
allows me to do four fried eggs in around a minute and a half. This one allows me to do two poached eggs in around a minute and a half. So now we've added to our breakfast range. We can reheat a breakfast, which I'm going to do shortly. But if you were cooking, like for example, in the E4, and you were doing your raw sausage, your raw bacon, and you needed cook eggs to order, you don't need a stove top or an induction hob. We can help you out with this material, and it's heavy duty PTFE. And again, just talking about the new normal and how restaurants are going to operate going forward, all of these accessories are significantly reducing the operator's contact with the food. So yeah. you're not getting as many touch points because of the number of accessories uh, and the number of uh, optional Yeah, absolutely. We put this on our pizza paddle, slide it into the oven, and away you go. It's a, it's a solid PTFE. It's easy to clean, easy to use, and will last a very, very long time. Okay. Sure. Right. So, Paul, what just, else have we got? Just very quickly, we've got a couple of uh, a bit more sort of fun, light-hearted questions coming in. Okay. Um, so first of all, very quickly, which one's your favourite of the Merry Chef ovens and why? Oh, okay. Um, the E2S is a fantastic oven. If you're going to do lots of pizzas and toasties and handout snacks, and I love it. It's beautiful in look and size, fits in anywhere. Like I said, the standard power comes on a 13 amp, three pin plug, just plug and play. It's easy to use, it's easy to clean. But for me, I like the E4. I'm a chef, I want to cook uh, a whole stuffed sea bass in two minutes. I want to do a grilled steak rare in two and a half minutes. So I like the versatility of the E4. I can still do my toasties and my pizzas and my snacks, but if I wanted to do a little bit more, the E4 allows me to do that. Okay, fantastic, good answer. Um, and we've had a question come in on the chat from Graham O'Neill. And Graham says, how long does it take to cook a baked potato? <laughs> nothing like nothing like putting you on the spot, okay. hey, Graham. Um, so, depending on the baked potato itself, the size and the weight, but also the seasonality can affect how long it takes to cook. On average, uh, and I always do it in bulk, four potatoes can take between 10 and 18 minutes, depending on the, uh, the power rating of the oven. Okay. So that's four. And then what I would do is I would chill them down, label them for three days, keep them in the fridge, and when I needed one, Within around 90 seconds, I can bring that baked potato back to freshly baked, crispy skin texture, like I said, in 90 seconds. And that would work then in most of the uh, accelerated impingement ovens. Okay, fantastic. Graham, I hope that answers your question for you. If you need more information, Graham, on recipes and, and cooking programs, our website, merrychef.com, we have what we call a ready recipe section on there, where the chefs from around the world have been putting their favorite recipes on there. But also, you can go onto that site and say, right, I have a Merry Chef E2S, and I want a breakfast menu offering, and it will list all the options you can have for breakfast. Or if you say, I've got a handheld snack menu, or I'm a petrol station forecourt, it will list what products we think are best suited for you. So you can then download your own perfect menu onto a USB stick, pop it into the oven and load up a menu from there. But there's a lot of experience on the ready recipes because as I said, we've got over 30 chefs globally within Wellbuilt and all working on Merry Chef and our other brands, of course. But primarily on ready recipes is for Merry Chef. So there's a lot of information there. What we say is if you're unsure of anything, email us, phone us. The chefs are always available free of charge on the phone and on the internet to be able to help chefs, cooks around the world get the best out of these ovens. We yeah. don't just sell a box, we sell a solution. And, and just a reminder, any culinary queries, questions at all, either now during the live webinar or going forward, please email culinary.uk at wellbuilt.com and Paul or one of his colleagues will be able to answer you. Yeah, we'll get back to you and we'll get you an answer and a solution. Okay. So, just want to go back to my, we're talking about accessories and containers. So, the Havi container, this one I've got here, ready meals. So, for a takeaway option. So, what I've done here is I've pre-cooked some products, and then I've blast chilled them down, and then I've assembled them into a takeaway container. So, this could be on display in a fridge, for example, as a full English breakfast. What I've got here are some baked beans, some uh, cooked bacon, mushrooms, a couple of sausages, a hash brown, and I made a uh, herb omelette in the corner there. So, what we do... That would be handed over to the operator, placed on a tray. Now I've tested this and pre-programmed the oven. I go to my product where it is and it says there, reheat breakfast. 50 seconds, I'm gonna deliver a full English breakfast and all I need to do is put the lid on it, give you some cutlery and away you go. Nice and simple. Cutting the wastage down as well because you're not hot holding everything in a hot plate. Thinking, right, 20 minutes before the end of service, how much more do I need? 
Am I going to have too much food left over? You can cook to order. Now, I've done it in a takeaway container, but of course, you could have done it, spread it out on there. The beans would have to go into one of our different accessories. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> right. Um, once we've done that, we will then, I've got lots of other dishes, but obviously you've got, probably got a few more questions so for me. We, we have, in fact. Um, there is some really good questions coming on, on the chat, so thank you very much for that. I can see that Steve and Adam are, are doing their best to answer as many people as possible. Uh, Paul, another culinary question that's come in, this time from Ray, again. From put, who, sorry? From Ray. Ray, okay. Putting you on the spot a little bit again, but Ray says, could you cook a toasted sandwich but keep the filling cool? For example, a smoked salmon bagel. Right, good question. And that's, yes, and I do have an answer for that. One second, I'll get to it. So, just to show you, uh, you probably can't see it there, the steam coming off uh, the breakfast there. This is hot. This container actually cools down on the outside quite quickly, so it's easy to manage. We would then just pop that. I said that was 50 seconds. There you go. If you're in an office building, grab your coffee, take that to your desk. There's your breakfast. And also, if you wanted toast, I could do it in 60 <laughs> seconds and add it on top. Sorry, so toasted sandwich, cold filling. Yes, bagels, absolutely. So any product, obviously if you did it open, you're gonna get the heat inside. So we wouldn't do a product like that open. I have done smoked salmon bagels and it's literally, you would create the product. If you're putting any greenery in there, rocket for example, you don't want that overflowing out the edges too much, it might singe. We would turn the fan down to minimum, which would be about 10%. And then we'd also turn the microwave completely off. And therefore we just leave it in the oven let the exterior toast a little bit, but the filling inside will stay as cool as we can possibly get it. So yes, you can do a cold filling. There you go. Hope that answers your question, Ray. Uh, very good question, a very good Ooh, answer. I like Paul. that, yeah. Um, Paul, you're, uh, you seem to be getting a lot of uh, love on the chat. Uh, so we've had comments from David Ash, uh, and we had a comment I saw a uh, short while ago from the guys over at CIA. Uh, in oh. Ireland, uh, just <laughs> saying that they're hoping to see you again very soon, obviously once the restrictions are lifted and uh, we're able to travel around a bit. Yeah, more. we normally do a couple of master classes with CIA in, in Southern Ireland uh, a year, but unfortunately, as you said, with the current situation, that's not happening. But uh, yeah, Ender, Seamus and the gang, Brian, see you soon, hopefully. Okay. So, so Chef, we've got around 10 minutes left. So really? just to, just to point you fast? out, the hour has almost gone that fast. Okay. So. Right. You keep chucking questions at me. <laughs> I'll keep talk, cooking as best I can. So one dish I wanted to show was a baked camembert. In a pub restaurant, this usually on the menu would say, please allow 15 to 20 minutes to order. We haven't got that long. So what I've done is I've taken it out of the uh, mold because there is staples in there, metal staples. I've put it in a dish. I'm gonna pop it into our Mary Chef E2S. Pre-programmed, one baked camembert, 60 seconds. Um, and then we'll do some toast to go with it, or some croutons. Fantastic. Just whilst you're doing that, Paul, um, we have had another question come in, and this is to do with delivery and availability of Merry Chef ovens. Now, we're, Paul and I are here in the Merry Chef factory up in Sheffield, uh, where we stock all of our Merry Chef ovens for the UK. Um, we're very proud that, despite the situation, the vast majority of the Merry Chef range is in stock um, and therefore is available uh, in usual delivery times uh, we can uh, deliver products sometimes the next day we supply to dealers and distributors around the country um, so again if you email us on the on the web uh, the email address culinary.uk at wellbuilt.com we can put you in touch with your local distributor who will be able to help and advise specifically on stock levels and delivery times so thank you very much for that question as well right I'm gonna take this out and then I want to touch briefly on cleaning which I want to show is how important that is. So this says, check the camembert, continue cooking if required. So I have a quick look and I think, oh, that needs a little bit longer. So I've put an extra 10 seconds, 15 seconds on the end of this, because certain camemberts, different fat content, cook slightly different. So this has given me an option to boost this camembert. Cleaning, what we have here, and what we always recommend is our own cleaner and protector. And if you want to get the best and the life out of your equipment, you've got to use proper cleaning and protector. There's no point just thinking you can go and buy Mr. Muscle and use some wire wool, because that's not gonna work. To maintain the life of the oven, what we call it is preventive maintenance. So while that camembert is doing, I'm just gonna go back and do some toast, which is the croutons. Wire wool, Brillo pads, no-no for Merry Chef. The things we recommend, sponges, green scourers, 
Obviously, you are going to use a chemical. Gloves and goggles, ideally essential. J cloths, paper towel for wiping out. Our ovens come with cool down trays. So we have three different ones here. Depending on the oven, you get a cool down pan. Fill it with water, pop it in the freezer. When it comes to cooling down the oven for cleaning, it's a lot faster. You place that tray of ice inside the oven and you will be asked that on the screen. It'll cool it down. Once it's finished, it'll ask you to clean the cavity. Apply oven cleaner via a sponge. Don't spray it in, it costs a lot of money. This, you get better control. Wipe that on, let it soak in for a few minutes. Then, using hot soapy water and the scrubby part there, you can then wipe that cavity out. With our E1S and E2S, you do not clean the roofs. Leave them to themselves, they'll sort themselves out. And obviously, you do not clean or scrub uh, door seals with a scratch pad. Same as on a fridge, you would leave them alone. Damp cloth, hot soapy water only. Once you've done that, you wipe the oven out and you apply an oven protector. And the reason we do an oven protector is that puts a barrier between the dirt in the oven and it makes your cleaning so much easier next time round. So I can't push this enough. Even if you've run out of cleaner, the protector is the way forward because it protects your cavity. And you would wipe that on into a thin film and it will bake on a light brown. Um, and like I said, it makes your cleaning so much easier. The last thing, filters. Filters are at the front of the oven. See, that needs a clean today. Take that out, give it a tap or a wipe. You pop it back, job done. And the very last thing, sanitizer, anything you touch with your fingers on the front. Cleaning is straightforward and simple with the Merry Chef range. Just whilst we're on this topic, Chef, um, Cara has been back on on the chat. Thank you, Cara. Um, she's asked, where can we get support videos on cleaning and programming? So, everything's on our Merry Chef website. Uh, there are videos that the team here have already done uh, recently. Uh, so there's lots of videos there. There's also uh, what we call a guide, step by guides you can download as well and stick them to the side of the oven so it's part of your training of your staff if you've got it there. But once you've done it once, it's fairly straightforward. Perfect, thank you very much. Cara, I hope that answers your question. Thank you for that. Okay, so I've just done a little starter. Like I said, normally this would take around 15 minutes in a pub environment, but we did that in a total of uh, two minutes. So a nice gooey camembert Fantastic. to dip into, we, which we were having a late lunch shortly. <laughs> now I've got loads more I could be cooking. I could go on all day. And like I said, and Andrew has said, the best thing is to send us an email and we'll answer your questions as best we can. Once we get our master classes and we're allowed to get back together as a group, we will publish masterclass dates, which you can register for on the website. And then you can come along to one of our facilities across the UK and Ireland and come and see a proper full blown Merry Chef demonstration. We've got one more question to come in. I think um, it will probably be the last one given the, the time and everything. Um, time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We've got a question that says, if I wanted to cook the food for a bit longer or make it browner, and I think your, your dish there with the, the croutons <coughs> is a perfect example, how would I do that in a Merry Chef oven? Okay. So we, you create the program, you've saved the program, and for whatever reason, something, an ingredient's changed. What you can do is you can go into the oven, and if the oven's unlocked, where you've got a pencil, you can make a change. So what I would do is I would go to recipes, press pencil, highlight my recipe, and for this we'll do our test. Press the pencil again, and now I can make a change. And if I needed that test to have more color, we go from 50 to 70, save. You can test it, or you can just save it. You're not changing the name. That program has changed. You've not changed the picture or the title, so you don't have to do anything else. Okay. Yeah, but you as have to make that. that assessment on your product when you're doing your testing. Very straightforward. And again, we have step-by-step -step guides on how to do that. Just send me an email. I can post these out to you or email them out to you. Okay, thank you very much. Well, I think given the time and given the uh, questions that have come in, which have been absolutely fantastic, really appreciate everybody for, uh, for that and, and for their support and interaction. I think we better leave it there, Chef. Yeah, it's a shame it's gone so fast because I've missed my chicken nuggets and chips, my Thai fish uh, parcel I was gonna do and a few <laughs> others, but hey, we can only do so much. Absolutely, you can. What I would say <coughs> is if you need any more information at all, feel free to log on to merrychef.com and you will find loads of resources, loads of the cleaning videos, the cooking videos, the ready recipes that Paul has spoken about. If you'd like any more information about any of the other well-built brands, log on to wellbuilt.com and you will find a host of information on there. 
As we've mentioned a couple of times throughout this session, any queries, questions, or anything regarding, to cul uh, regarding culinary, please email culinary.uk at wellbuilt.com and Paul or one of the culinary team will be more than happy to help. So I guess all that leaves us to say is uh, thank you very much and uh, hopefully we will see you at some point soon. Thanks guys, take care, stay safe. I'm gonna carry on cooking anyway. <laughs>